Alright, so like y'all saw in the title and thumbnail, today we are going, or actually tomorrow, we're going to try to catch some giant bass on live crawdaddies. So, I'm down here at my pond. It's got quite a few crawfish in it, and we should be able to catch some. So, I'll throw y'all back to yesterday, or last night, whenever I just baited with a little bit of dog food through and one crawfish trap around there and one crawfish trap around there and uh yeah here's those clips And today we are down here to check them and hopefully we got a lot of big old crawfish to use as bait. So we'll come up to this first one right here. Looks like it actually got dragged out of the water a little bit. Probably by a coon or something. They kind of like to do that. But I doubt they could have gotten any of my crawfish out of here. So I'll pull it up. Hopefully it's full stuff. And not much. We do have... A couple crawfish and one giant one holy and actually a couple bluegill I'll probably save those as bait just because I don't know might want to use them and there's a spider crawling on my arm die so I'll grab my handy dandy bucket filled up with some water just like that crack this thing open there we go oh he's got a hold of one of the bluegills chill out dude come on stop let him go there you go Come here. Ah! Look at how big that thing is though. Honestly, I'm surprised you didn't wreck all these bluegill. We'll go ahead and save those. Those are good bait, especially this guy. He is perfect size for about a 25 pound bass. There we go, two crawfish, two bluegill, and I think we have, um, we got this guy, and no offense bud, but you're a little bit too small for anything, so. There you go, go back, oh. He's dead. Another little tiny guy, see if he's dead. Nope, he's fine, just that guy. <gasps> oh! Look, it's a little baby turtle. He's so cute, little baby. I wonder if I can use this guy's bait. Probably not. So long, bud. Anyways, time to check the other trap. All right, he's coming up on the next trap in this little bunch of cattails right here. Hopefully those guys don't. Holy crap, is there a bird fight going on? Whoa. Oh snap, we got some boys. How many do we have? We got like three or four, I think. We got four. Wait, what? One, two, three, four. Man, I need to go back to school. Dude, this guy is big swole. Look at the size of that guy. Oh my. Can't even get him to let go of the trap. All right, you'll just stay there for a minute. And then we got, oh, we had five. I told you I couldn't get, ah, oh. It's two, it's three, and there is five. And then we got this guy. Look at the size of him. Oh, look at him, he can't get back over. Oh. Look at the size of that crawdaddy. If that isn't gonna catch me a freaking double digit bass, I don't know what is. Look at him. Oh, look at him. He wants to fight. Oh. Look at the size of that guy. Holy crap. Oh shoot. Not very smart, are they? <laughs> Look at that. All right, I gotta go and put these guys in a cooler with an aerator. And tomorrow, bright and early, we will take them to the honey hole 
of bass fishing. All right, I got this cooler and an aerator, mainly just to keep these bluegill alive because I do want to see if I can catch something on them. So, go run this guy down to the water. Whoa. Oh, oh no, my socks. There we go. Just dump it all in. One bluegill, two bluegill, one crawdaddy. Go out, come on now. Look at that. All right, boys, don't kill each other. Maybe I'll go and grab some plants to give them cover. Perfect thingy in here. Crank her on. Look at that, boom, oxygen. And since we did only get like, I don't know, six crawfish and two bluegill, I think I'm gonna go ahead and grab this cast net right here and uh, maybe throw it off of the dock and see if I can get a little bit more like three to four inch bluegill as bait since I'm gonna be fishing about all day and that is not enough. So, run it down here to the dock and uh, just cast in the shallow area and see if I can't catch something. Alrighty, I've been throwing for a while and all I'm catching are these guys, about hand size, which are, I mean, I guess I could try to use them, but I'm looking for a little bit smaller. So, I got an idea. I'm gonna run over here to the feeder. Pop this up, ah, there's a spider. Click test. Something should happen. Oh snap, here we go, watch this. That's a little bit disappointing. That should have basically called like all the bluegill in the entire pond over here unless I already scared them all off. So I'm gonna try to wait a little bit and then cast in there. That's what we're looking for. About, I don't know, probably three and a half to four inches. Run them over here to the bucket. Add them to the collection. One eternity later. Alrighty, I've been throwing the cast net for a little while now. I've got probably, I think I put five or six small bluegill in here and I caught like, I don't know, 25 bigger ones. Whenever that feeder goes off, all the big fat ones come to eat. But we got more than enough bait to fish tomorrow. So uh, yeah, I will see y'all then. Tomorrow. Oh dang. Where is he? Oh! Alrighty, 
Sorry boys, so we're back at this pond where it caught the 913, uh, maybe two or three or four weeks ago, right on that point. That's a good fish. Yeah. Yep. Holy crap. Yeah, that's a, that's a real good fish. That's a real good fish. Yeah? Yeah, that's a... Oh my gosh! Get the net! Get the net! Perfect area. Got all the bait. Oh crap. Slightly dead, but... Pretty alive. All the crawfish are good. So, we're pretty set. I got two rods. One with just a hook uh, for the crawfish. I'm thinking I'm just going to cast them out there and let them work themselves. Might switch that to a Carolina rig later. And on this rod, I got, hold on, this is a big mess. Just a bobber to a little circle hook. And that's what I'm going to put the bluegill on. And uh, yeah, let's get fishing. Hopefully, we get wrecked by an absolute giant. Alrighty, I'll go ahead and rig up the bluegill first. I think she just got, she's got this big old cork to down, I don't know, four and a half to five feet, nah, more like four feet of line and just a little wacky rig hook at the bottom. Now I'm just gonna lay that down there and keep an eye on that bobber and we'll hope soon it'll go down. I imagine it shouldn't take too long, but I'll go ahead and rig up the crawdaddy. Gosh, these things are quick. Come here, bud. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm just trying to put a hook in your butt. There we go. Got him. And yes, I am going to be sticking hooks in uh, fish's tails today. So if that offends you, then, uh, well, like this video. Just like that, right through the tail. And then goes back out the back. Should give this thing some good action. Hopefully it jumps around the bottom. As you can see, this area's got a lot of rocks, so this crawfish should be a, a pretty natural forage for these bass. See if I can cast this worth of crap. Two thousand years later. Alright guys, I'm getting bit on the crawfish right now. Look at him. He is taking off. Alright. Let him take it. You should have it. Oh, he spat the crawfish. Just a little guy. And this little dude choked the crawfish. Just a little one pounder. There he goes. Well, the fishing freaking sucks. We've been fishing for probably, I don't know, three or four hours in this pond. So instead, I just decided to go exploring. I'm way up on this hill, and I'm trying to get to that hill. It doesn't look very big, but it's freaking massive, and you can see a big old lake over the end of it. So, uh, freaking I'll go up there real fast. Professional trespasser. Wow. There's a lake I was talking about just over that tree line right there. Oh, look. Come on, honey.
Alrighty, well, we're back at my pond. We got a whole new tactic going on today. We still got just about all the crawfish, but uh, unfortunately, all the bluegill kind of got kachowed by them. But we're down here, and we're going to try to actually catch some fish today. Instead of using a barber setup or Carolina rig setup, I just have, this is just a straight hook, and instead of letting it sit, I'm just going to flip it around structured and fish it just like a Texas rig, like flip it around this dock and just rise, fall, rise, fall, just like a jig or a Texas rig. And, uh, well, I just don't understand how a crawfish couldn't get smacked doing that. Ah! Holy spaghettios, that scared the crap out of me. Oh, do we have some here? What this thing's got me hung. We going, we going, we going. Oh, I dropped it. Eat up, eat up, you got it again. I dropped it again. Is this fish retarded? Alright, he got it again. I got it. I got him. I got him. Yes. Got him. Yes. Come here. That whole time, he was just gnawing on that crawfish, and you can see the end of its claw and its antenna sticking out, and there's the hook. Little one and a half to two pounder. Nice and chunky with the crawfish down its gullet. Can y'all see that? That's super cool. Crap, I killed him. Oh! Whoa. Little bluegill hook's probably a little bit too big for him, but I don't know. We'll give it a shot. It should get smacked. Tasty. Oh shoot, here we go, here we go. The bobber's completely gone, he's just running. All right, I gotta set the hook in this guy. Oh, there's the bobber right there, here we go. Crap, he's running me into the bank. Oh, it's a good one. Come here. Yes, sir. That is what I'm after. Look at that. That's easily a three and a half or four pounder. And bluegill is gone. Straight down its gold. I can see its tail. It's literally crushing it right now. Look at that hook right here, top of the mouth, perfect. Wasn't going anywhere. There we go. That is a nice fish. Solid four pounder, I'd say. Could be a little bit thicker, but I'll take it. All right, we'll let this big girl go. I think she's actually been caught before because there's the hook, or there's the hole right there by that little bit of blood where I caught her, and there's another hole right there. So, I think this fish has actually been caught in here before, so that's actually pretty cool. All right, big girl. There you go. Dope. So